JPR, do you remember, I'm going to ramble again, when Johnny Knox tried to get the union into WQAM and turn the oh. station off? Oh, I, 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 I had left QAM by then. Uh, not on my own free will. <laughs> I, I got fired uh, over the Paul McCartney story. Wait a minute. Yeah. I was supposed to be the guy that got fired over that. I, I wasn't. I, do you remember who you were talking to on the phone the moment Rex Clark came in and axed you at ABC? He didn't ax me. He asked me if I'd come on the next day. But the truth is, I was on the phone with John Paul Roberts from WQAM in Miami. He was listening to the station all the way from New York. A friend of mine saying, Roby, what in the hell are you doing? And it was 1.54 a.m. You were on the phone. They came in with a guard. Rick was in his pajamas because he didn't have time to dress because I was causing a national panic. I had you on the phone. And I'm about to say, John Paul, I don't know what the, you know, it's, it seems to be very interesting, you know. But they thought I was, I was doing a bad thing. And so I, uh, I, I hung up on you. And I apologize after 25 years. I well, did not scared, mean scared the hell to me. Well, I, I didn't mean to hang up on the you. The next thing I know, the newsman is playing the music. Well, what I said was, I uh, very calmly, I turned to uh, Gary Adler, who was the guy, uh, the engineer. I said, okay, Gary, uh, do come together by the Beatles. After come together, do uh, go to Les Marshak in the booth, introduce the news, and go on. And after that, I'm out of here. I guess I was the first person to say I'm out of here. Um, WABC... Took me out of there. The guard wasn't needed at all. Uh, I didn't say that Paul McCartney was dead. I said there's reason to believe that these people are putting messages in the tracks indicating that maybe, my Lord, we John. All, we all were into that. We were comparing I, you know, the album notes, you know, all the things, Paul walking across the street without the shoes, you know. I would like to do this at a so, different program because that's it, a whole different program. It could be an hour or two long, and I've got some stuff that I have not released yet. So wait a minute. No, I'm you, serious. You weren't you weren't yanked off the air for that? Oh no, I wasn't loaded. I wasn't drinking. I wasn't smoking. I wasn't doing anything. For violating the format is what no, I. Heard. I wasn't violating the format. They gave talking me, too much. No, wow. ABC. They gave you know something about ABC. It's very interesting. When you and I were coming up in radio, we always had to have a format. You know. A clock. We had to do everything according to what Todd stores. I later dated his widow, and she's a wonderful woman. Laurie, in case you hear this on the, uh, uh, wherever it goes, Laurie, I love you. Now, uh, and I knew his two sons, Robbie, and, um, and uh, I uh, love those people. And, and although he invented rock and roll radio, it, uh, it didn't pertain all the time. Now, I did not cause a problem at WABC except the fact they had one telephone operator. When I said McCartney might be dead, she was overwhelmed, could, the boss couldn't get through, came down in his bathrobe with a guard, yes, didn't physically jerk me off. I left willingly saying, Rick, tomorrow, he, he, asked, he asked me, JPR, he said, will you be here tomorrow to do your show? Because we're paying you. I said, no, I don't think so, Rick, I don't think so. I think you're going to be famous tomorrow morning. And the next morning, he was famous in New York Post, the Daily News, the New York Times, Reuters, UPI, Associated Press, and the Christian Science Monitor, just to name a few, and Billboard and Cashbox and the others. Because I blew the whistle on a continuing and ongoing situation wherein the first Paul McCartney was replaced after being maimed and burned by a second boy who turned out to be even more talented. And I can give you, I can tell you who went to bed with whom. And that's oh, as far as I'm going to get, because I'm not going I'm not to get into the sex part of it either. We'll do that in a whole another episode. Well, as long as we got them uh, listening, why don't we pause for a spot? We'll be right back. Real Radio! You should, we're, we're if back you don't with, put it on the air, you should put this on the tape. We're back with Roby. We're discussing why all the Paul McCartney rumors that he was dead. Why, Roby? I never made any money from it. I don't expect to. I am just uh, going to tell you that uh, if you had uh, a country, Great Britain, and now the Queen is really, really upset that she has to pay taxes, and this went all the way into the palace. You don't know what it used to go into that palace, from Jack the Ripper to everybody else. You don't know who was the deranged, uh, incestuous product of that monarchy who had a penchant for slitting throats of young girls. Now, that's a whole different thing, that, but I won't... Thing, but I'm we're not talking gonna, Paul McCartney. We're talking Paul McCartney. We'll get to that in the next... 
Uh, the McCarty thing, I have to know of because I am I have been in uh, very very close with all of the people. I mean, as I said on the air uh, recently about May Pang and, and John Lennon's girlfriend and Lennon and the people who worked with him and uh, McCartney and, and and George Harrison saying hi uh, to my wife and finding out that George was just next to us. And what what do you well be well be what you are telling us that Paul McCartney was maimed and burned in an accident. And that's why. They came up with a double. Is this what you're saying? Did I read you? Well, I don't know. Who's Billy Shears? Um, what we did was, uh, I don't want to sound like this tabloid crap that you see on television because it's a little bit below me, and I'm not getting paid for this show. Hey, you know, I lost a job over this, and I never knew. I'm finding out along with the listeners right now. I'd, I'd like to know us. why in the world WQAM would fire John Paul Roberts for being on the phone with Roby Young when he blew the whistle on this entire scam. Well, no, that's... Did you do something else bad, like wear a turban? <laughs> yeah. Oh, I was I a mean, bad boy. Did you know no, Richard? I... <laughs> no, we got a call one night from a young lady at the Miami airport who said she saw a private jet pull up. Her and her boyfriend were in the observation deck doing oh. what young people do. And they saw a private jet pull up and a, a gentleman got out that looked like Paul McCartney got into a big limousine. They jumped in their car and followed it. Yes. And where they ended up... I know. Okay, well, they ended up at the place where the Beatles stayed in 64 when they were in Miami. In Buddy's house. Mm, and I chased that story all night long, figuring I'm doing great work for WQAM. I'll probably get a raise. Well, in the morning when I didn't make the disc jockey's little appearance at a high school, I didn't get a raise. I got canned. And <laughs> the rest is history. The owners of WQAM and I, Bradley and Robbie Stores and uh, Laurie Stores, uh, are great friends even to this moment. And uh, you didn't really miss much because uh, uh, the family, the Storrs family, worked over pretty badly and took, took a good deal from her. But uh, she, she had, uh, I remember going over to her house and saying, Laurie, uh, and we were gonna date, you know, she was dating Gary Stites, the living legend, but then I think got married. And uh, years later, uh, about three years ago, after a kiss on the lips, I said, you know, I don't know if I can do this. She says, uh, well, why not? I, I'm saying, well, I'm talking to the heir to the store's broadcasting foundation or whatever it is. Beautiful girl. She says, uh, Roby, you don't have to fall in love. Just have good friends. And I think that's really neat. Well, now, I don't know how we got this in the Beatles and everything <laughs> else. But uh, uh, let me ask the question again. One, uh, one more time. Are you really telling us? That the original Paul McCartney... Go back to Buddy Dresner's house. The original Paul McCartney... Yes. ...was not the later Paul McCartney, that there really was a double? It really is. It's more like it. The uh, uh, point is that when you... Uh, Wait a minute. To this day? Don't! To this day? Hallelujah! No, the, the man we see on TV now is Paul McCartney. Is not Paul McCartney? Come on! It's the best Paul McCartney we've had. Refined, cleaned, groomed... And had more talent than the first one. Uh, I got to get back to... Prove uh, it. Prove it to me. I don't need to prove it to you. How can we prove it? <laughs> All right. Oh, then I will. All right. Okay. okay. Now, the other night... Mm, shall I do this? Mm -hmm. Bob Sherman called me up. Shall I tell you about uh, Peter and Gordon and Jane Asher and witnesses and firsthand personal... Yes. You see, yes. I will not go on the air and do hearsay because they would say, Roby Young, you're a fool. I will only tell you things that I know firsthand from from the from the person who told me to me. Just the facts. Everybody's got a fax nowadays. Just the facts. Just the facts. Just the facts man. All right. Well, I don't know why we're doing this. Uh, I never made any money. They sold an extra twelve million albums after I did that on ABC, and uh, I never made a dollar. But I did enjoy meeting John Lennon's other Oriental girlfriend, and I did enjoy. Uh, finding out some strange things about that. And uh, I'm pretty much at ease with it. And uh, the only thing I didn't like was during it, when uh, we were investigating it, and uh, we'll get back to this in the next uh, sequence, about how we photographed the length of the first McCartney's nose, the bridge of the nose, and the second McCartney's bridge of the nose. Um, we couldn't get to any other private parts, and I just made a joke which was disgusting, and please edit it out. Uh, how they d disconnected the telephones. 
Uh, I'd be, you know, uh, uh, going back uh, from from uh, meetings and things like that. And uh, these photographers, Life Magazine guy comes, he says, Roby, he says, I've got actual proof, not only that this is not the same McCartney, but that Brian Epstein wasn't murdered. He says, go to the phone across the street of the Americana, 53rd and 7th. I don't know what it's called now. Have you been in New York recently? Not really. I try to stay away. And um, so uh, I did that, and, and his name is Sherman. <coughs> member of the White House press corps, old friend, and he wouldn't put me on. And we did that, and we did the measurements and everything. My Lord, there are two. Then we got Dr. Henry Truby from the University of Miami, right. and he told us on tape, and I've got the tape somewhere, or Rick has, Shaw has it. I've got it, too. You have it, too. All I, right. I interviewed him. Well, he said it's not the same guy. They had voice prints. It's like a fingerprint. Yeah. It doesn't lie. That's right. But I don't know why we are doing this, because I don't want another job... I've already hit the top stations. I've already been on the network. I don't really need this aggravation. I wouldn't mind a little money, but I'm not going to extort it. And I'm not going to have the death threats that I had and the problem I had afterwards. And that's what we should get to later because I'm getting very... Roby, when this airs, you realize all the tabloids are not going to be calling you. You know? I doubt it. Inside edition. <laughs> and all the, they're no. going to want this... You know, this story just the, sort of faded away years the, ago. It uh, never was finalized. The one thing that you forget is that you and I are not 17 anymore. And no one really gives a damn about Paul McCartney. No, I think you're wrong. I, uh, the same way people still care about what happened to JFK. This is a, an ongoing mystery that has never been settled. If you would and like, got in first-hand information, and I'm sitting here with bated breath, wanting to know more. All right. If you want to, after we break, we're going to come back, and I will give you several specifics about why the second Paul McCartney is number two, and the first one can't talk to us anymore. Real radio. You know, Robbie, I, I was led to believe, like everybody else, I think, and, and the mystery sort of died out that, well, it was just a big promotional hype by the Beatles to sell records. And it was all intentional and nothing ever happened to Paul McCartney. And that was the end of that. Capitol Records never gave me any money. They might have bought dinner a couple of times. They were cheap. And all my 35 years in radio, I never really got any payola. I, I mentioned the other night on the air, I said, you know, one guy gave me $100 to uh, play uh, a song called Hide and Seek by a group called The Sheep. And I put it on the turntable, and I looked, and I pulled the damn record off. I said, this is disgusting. And I gave him his money back, and I said, don't you ever do this to me again. And that is the whole thing with me. I'm, you know, used to sign, you know, well, you, were, you were a disc jockey. Uh, didn't you sign Section 317 every year saying, I won't take any payola, and I don't know Dick Clark, and I don't know Alan Freed. Oh, yeah, I, I, I turned down, you know, guys would call. I got my unlisted phone number at home when I called me. He says, you know, JPR, we'll give you a boat, a motor, a trailer. You live in Florida. You should like, please play this record one time. I said, I can't do it. I'm sorry. <laughs> I like my job. I want to keep my job. And, you know, that's that. But we're talking about Paul McCartney, oh. uh, number one. And and is this true? Come on. They want me to save this for this new uh uh, a syndicated thing, but uh, since I hope you'll be part of it, uh, perhaps this, what we're doing right now, and this is transcribed, this is recorded uh, on the 10th of June, 12th of June, what is today? Mm, 13th. 13th of June. Let's see, do I have any wives or birthdays on this date? Let's Paul McCartney. See. Paul Mc no, I never married him. Where is Paul? Paul is uh, doing real well, but you see... The real Paul. The first one is in an octopus's garden, wondering if you will still feed me if you'll still need me when I'm 64 when the contract runs out that you made with me that you would take care of me if I and my attendants would be quiet until that time and the walrus was Paul and they tried to get rid of it with yes he's dead at the end of uh, uh, not uh, let's see what not all my love and what is it called love is love is all there is one of the tracks when you give me that played, song you know, what it, love is all one of the tracks, when played backwards, clearly says, Paul is dead. Well, that was bogus, because Paul is not dead. Paul is terribly burned and maimed and still around and might even be hearing this. How did this happen? He was going back in a, uh, uh, not an XK, XJ6, XJ, I forget, a Jag. For, they were working in, uh, not Pinewood Studios, Borehamwood, uh, Abbey, Abbey Road. 
and he was ripped. I, he was, I can't say the colloquialism that I use. He was, because this is national, so uh, I can't do that. But he was high, and uh, even, you know, it happens to you, whether you're high or not. But he had a terrible situation where uh, he had a car crash, and he was burned, terribly burned. Uh, and the talent, you know, uh, he was out for a long time, and they don't want, uh, if I were uh, in, in charge of the exchequer, as they say, the treasurer of Great Britain, and I had billions of dollars, I mean, it was in the billions, over the long term, with contracts with the EMI, Electrical and Musical Industries, which is a division of Thorne Industries, T-H-O-R-N-E, which my grandmother even owned part of, which is connected with MCA and Capital and the United States and every doggone promotion man that ever lived and every transshipper like Henry and all the rest of them and all of the vinyl and all of that income to the British Isles. Are you about to let the teeny boppers of the world know that their favorite group has one boy who is maimed beyond recognition, worse than the elephant man? Are you going to let that happen? Of course not. You're going to get somebody else. And they did. And let me ask you to interject. Where is the real Paul? Is he still alive today? Yeah. Now, if they got uh, a situation like this, they would have to have someone at least talented. The new one uh, worked real well, but by himself. Now, you, if you remember, uh, Bad to Be by Billy J. Kramer and the Dakotas. How about Little Children, John Paul? Little children, don't you leave me alone. Okay, remember all that. That particular style was the early Lennon and McCartney. One of the reasons for John Lennon's total alienation from Alan Klein. Oh, and now we get to the office across from me and the uh, little wine drinking sessions with John Lennon's girlfriend while uh, he was still going with, uh, or married to, I don't know if he married, did he marry Yoko? No. And May was over and she and I would uh, have, you know, I think I need to regroup. I need to drop this for a moment and we'll come right back and I'll get this straight. Roby, I, I want to say this one more time. And every time I've asked this question tonight on, on the show, you, you veered away a little bit. Sidestep, no you're, doubt. You're, you're telling us for a fact that Paul McCartney is maimed somewhere in a, what, a nursing home or something somewhere, and the fellow we see is not the real Paul McCartney. Who is the fellow we see today calling himself Paul McCartney? Did that squeak get through? We can edit that out, I'm sure. Number one, as a, a member of the Fifth Estate, which is uh, journalism, I am not going to tell you anything for a fact that I can't put my hands on and actually identify it. During this program, I have told you a few facts. I will tell you some other facts now. But uh, I do know that it makes me wonder when... Uh, the day after I alluded to the fact, I'm sorry, I said fact, interesting, it's a, it's a phrase, alluded to the fact, alluded to the rumor, which was given to me some, from some kids in the Midwest at a school. You know, I wasn't the first disc jockey to claim Paul McCartney was dead. Roby Young didn't do that. I merely repeated the rumor. And if I had my big time ego, I, I did that. No, I don't. I, I merely repeated the rumor. But the difference was... The guy that did it first was on some college station in the Midwest, and then the kids called me up because I'm uh, going out to 42 states out of Lodi, New Jersey, on a gut bucket, uh, hard-hitting radio station right into the uh, swamps of New Jersey, AM, and if KYA or KYW, we had a station in Phoenix, if they'd go off the air, they'd listen to me in Hawaii. It was the only other station in the United States on my frequency was a station in Phoenix, Arizona. And I remember the mornings when uh, I'd, I'd go in there to do tests from four to six and get paid a couple hundred dollars just to walk a block and say hello. We're veering again. Well, I plan to veer. Facts. All right, you'll get the facts. You'll get the facts. Okay. We want the facts. You want to speak into the microphone. We want the facts. America wants to know. Finally, after all these years, we want to know. 
And well, I was, you know. Well, you I, was, know. I was getting to it. You know. Yeah, I do know. The thing that bothered me about it was during the thing that happened, getting back to about two sequences ago before commercial breaks, the damn f- uh, people would uh, uh, t- tap my phone at 53rd and 7th. Now, George Harrison lived in the building. Ed McMahon was always nice. Everybody else, a lot of people you would know, were, okay, if I W.C. Handy's widow would sit in the in the lobby, and I would look at, who is that Who is that lady sitting there? Uh, W.C. Handy's, da-da-da-da-da, St. Louis Blues. She'd sit there. I thought she was somebody's maid. Nice black lady. And I said, who is that woman who's sitting there? Well, Mr. Young, and that was uh, Rick, who was with the CIA, who was part of the thing. And that's uh, W.C. Handy's widow. I said, good Lord, I must shake that woman's hand. In any case, uh, you ask me about this. The truth is uh, that the McCartney uh, situation uh, is real. If I had the money coming in, uh, I wouldn't let it go. I wouldn't let the teeny boppers know. They replaced him with somebody special and did some plastic surgery. Calipers on the bridge of the nose will show that there were not one but two. Voice prints will show not one but two. I refuse, I got to tell you, uh, I refuse to uh, receive any flack on this. You talk to Dr. Henry Truby at the University of Miami if he's still alive. We have the voice prints there. I, ref- I refer you to Bob Sherman, member of the White House Press Corps. And he also was the first person who came up with that and the fact that Epstein, Brian Epstein, also is alive and not paying taxes. The whole thing gets down to money. The second Paul McCartney, very talented. Now, let's pretend for a moment that we're going to an engagement party. Peter and Gordon, Lady Godiva, right? Lady Godiva. Uh, I won't live in a world without love. What's another, Paul? John Paul, what's another? Uh, you played the records. <laughs> the man, fortunately, can't remember he Peter can't, and Gordon. Can't remember the songs. Well, Absolutely. so here's the party, all right, and uh, the rock and rollers are there, and uh, here is Linda Eastman, and uh, daughter of Lee Eastman, an attorney, all right. Now, Linda likes to take pictures. Now, there's Paul McCartney, and there's Jane Asher, uh, sister of uh, Peter and Gordon, okay, Asher. Paul McCartney, the one, was engaged to marry Jane Asher. And yet, the Paul McCartney, uh, looking a little bit different under the eyes, looks like he's been doing a lot of coke or he went on a diet or, you know, why is he so thin? He looks a little gaunt. But in those days, you know, you got to understand that uh, the Beatles uh, did not uh, interact with plebeian society. No disc jockeys, no writers, no nobody. So no one really knew because they were always to themselves, and I would have been too, just out of self-defense for crying out loud. Don't claw me. Don't take my clothes. Don't pull my clothes. Damn it, I want to be alone. So no one had ever been able to get close to the Beatles except the Beatles. And, of course, a nice man named George who arranged their songs and the engineers in the studio who, when they found out about this, put into the tracks backwards, forwards, sideways that the first one was replaced. It was rude. He probably has a great payoff that he's going to get money from. But uh, when we went to the Jane Asher party, Jay Marks, who wrote the book Rock and Other Four-Letter Words, he was a uh, he was on WABC-FM, which became WPLJ. He was a friend of mine. And he was a writer for the Village Voice, you know. So uh, we're on the corner uh, at 10.30 in the morning at uh, uh, 6th Avenue in New York, uh, across from ABC at the Hilton, 54th Street. And he says, Roby, I heard what you did the other night on the air. Yeah, well, hell, who didn't? You know, I got in trouble for that. I didn't realize. I, I never said the guy was dead. I just said there was reason to believe. And all hell broke loose. He says, well, it should have because. I'm quoting Jay Marks. He said, I was at the engagement party for Jane Asher and Paul McCartney. And I'm there and I'm looking and I'm saying, well, why isn't, uh, why aren't they together? He's over there with this girl with a camera. Oh, well, that's Linda Eastman. She was on the tour with him. That's his girlfriend. What do you mean girlfriend? He's supposed to be engaged to Jane. No, that's not the same McCartney. Well, that's a direct quote. It's not hearsay. It was told to me. And I don't have any money in this. Not even in this program. There was a name, and like they say, when when you start getting old like us, the first thing to go is the memory. 
and I can't remember the second, but there was a name at one point years ago I heard who was a spitting image double for Paul McCartney, whose whereabouts after this situation, they couldn't find him. He's never surfaced. Oh, what, Campbell or Billy Shears or something like that? I don't know. I, You know, I really have no interest in it uh, because it didn't make me a dime. It caused me a lot of aggravation. Uh, it impugned me as a reliable person. Uh, I never said the guy was dead. I don't say it now. I say there's reason to believe that there's something going on because I'm an engineer. I'm an audio engineer after disc jockey. I'm an audio engineer. I have owned several companies and lost more money than most people are. And I know what I'm talking about. I have heard this stuff. I have talked to the people firsthand, and I'm telling you one-to-one, -one. firsthand, no hearsay. It's not the same guy. And that's all I have to say. And we'll be back after this. Real radio. The sky is falling. The sky is falling. The sky is falling, said Chicken Little. Paul McCartney is dead. Paul McCartney is dead. Paul McCartney is dead, said Roby Young and or John Paul Roberts and a handful of other disc jockeys a man in the Johnny Carson Show audience who stood up at the same time at the same moment that I was doing it coast to coast said the same thing on television coast to coast. Why? Because we like you. We were being robbed of one of our rock and roll icons and we suspected. And there was what later became known as a cover-up. Don't you hate it when your girlfriend deceives you? That's a cover-up. She went out with Ronnie the other night. Never told you, but you found out about it. That's the worst thing in the world. That's a cover-up. President Nixon, fabulous lawyer, probably did a lot of good things for the country as far as dealing and wheeling and money, keep the money going, but he didn't tell us what he was doing, and that's what we resent so much. We resent it as much as we resent our girlfriend going out with the other guy, and we resent the fact that the four people that meant so much to us when we did our homework and we listened to those records and we waited until the next one was released, we believed in them. And they turned out to be idols with clay feet. The denouement, the thing that we hate most, is to find out that what we thought was true and what we taught other people to be true isn't real. My Lord, this has gargantuan proportions. Here is someone who is just great, and we love him and everyone, you know, and the others, but, and he could sing, and he could be great, and, but then something happened. Why didn't they just tell us that on the way home at 5 o'clock in the morning, the guy ran a red light, had a terrible problem, got maimed beyond belief, because someone would have gotten pictures. It would have ruined the group, and the income to the British Isles would have been decimated. EMI, Thorn Industries, I mentioned earlier in the program. Capital Records. MCA, later, subcontractors, everybody, rack jobbers, and teenagers around the world wouldn't have a group to worship. You know, we have side-by-side -side religion sometimes. I think we have God and Jesus and Buddha and, and the saviors. But then I also think that we really do like to get some strength and happiness from familiarity of music. Music is one of the greatest things that we have given to us as human beings. Everybody says sometimes, well, it's, it's the heartbeat of the mother. When you're in the womb, you hear the regular heartbeat, and then you come out. and No, it's not always that. I like music with uh, uh, different types of rhythms and things like that. My Lord, I've given my life to it. But I will say this. You don't want to let anybody know if somebody got hurt real, real bad and looks ugly now. Name somebody. Uh, who's, a popular, who's a popular guy now? Say, say, name some group or something. Don't you give me a rap group. I, mean, I was going to say, you know, Frank not JFK Jr. All right, the kid with the salute, okay? The kid with the salute. Kid with the salute. Kid with the salute. Turns out 
that he uh, uh, overdosed and had a, a propane torch and was doing crack or rocks or something in a private plane and burned his head off, but he could still speak uh, through, you know, that, uh, we don't want to. We don't want to know about that. We want the icon. We want to remember JFK and that little boy next to Jacqueline Kennedy saluting the casket. We have these values that we pin our lives to, and oddly enough, whether it is Ozzy Osbourne, Stairway to Heaven, which I hate, Bill Haley and Rock Around the Clock, To the Isle by the Fire, in the Still of the Night, whatever it is. We have things that we cling to because they are part of us. And we don't want anybody messing around with our lives and what is part of us. And in the wisdom that directed the Beatles, when the first Paul McCartney got maimed and burned and hurt terribly, the hush-up had to happen. The engineers resented it. The writers resented it. The arranger didn't like it. And so they put the stuff in the records. And I know, because I am a recording engineer, I'm one of a few that you'll ever meet this week. I know how to do it. I own the equipment. And I, too, have put messages on records. That's a whole other story. I didn't tell you about that. But that's the whole thing. I don't want any money. I don't want any more recognition. My Lord, if somebody else recognizes me, uh, some lawyer's going to call up and sue me for some ex-wife or some car I didn't pay for. But I want you to know that uh, that happened. And it will happen in life. Look at the uh, CIA. Look at the Pentagon. Look at our own government. Look at the Trilateral Commission. Look at the World Bank. Or not. I guess that's as heavy as it's going to get. I don't know how we're going to get off this. Roby, I don't know of anybody else who's qualified to tell that story. Good. 